With automobiles advancing by leaps and bounds technologically, are they becoming less expensive to own and maintain? Is there more maintenance today or less maintenance than there was, say, 10, 20, 30 years ago? And are the costs associated with that maintenance less today than they were in that same time frame? Is it less likely that you're going to have a breakdown? Is the reliability still there with lesser maintenance? Or is it pretty much the same as it's always been? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video, mainly focusing through the lens of Subarus, but we'll look at more makes and models across the board and uh, compare and contrast them. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. So again, as vehicles are progressing technologically, getting more advanced, more complicated, are they getting less expensive to own and maintain? And is that reliability going up hand in hand with that differential cost of the maintenance? Now, just this week, I've been thinking about this and I've had lots of stories come to me in emails and customers, et cetera. And a couple examples I'd like to share with you and why this topic popped into my head and why I think that at the end of the day, maintenance is still just as key today as it was, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. And neglecting that maintenance or thinking that because the car is better designed and better engineered and more advanced than it was, that it can forego that maintenance is a very poor position to have. So just today, I was talking to a technician uh, in the low part of South Carolina. He was working on a fairly new Subaru Forester. I believe it was a 2016 or 2017 with right at 100,000 miles on it. So in my opinion, just getting broken in, it should be at that sweet spot and ready for another 100 to 150,000 miles very easily, very comfortably. And he was diagnosing a concern that he originally thought was a wheel bearing concern that actually happened to be in the front differential of the CVT. Now, normally you'd think with 100,000 miles, there would be no issue in the drive line, especially in the front differential, the bearings, et cetera, in that differential. It's, it's a non-issue. Why would that tear up on a car that is that new with that low of mileage when there's so many other Subarus with a quarter million or more miles on them with no issues? And it always comes back down to maintenance or the lack thereof. Now, this car being a, again, a 2016 or 2017 model with about 105,000 miles, if I remember exactly right, uh, should have had at least three differential services by now. The differential gear oil should be replaced every three years or 36,000 miles. Now, as far as we could figure out in looking at that gear oil, it had never been replaced. Now, a lot of people will sit there and argue that well, a modern vehicle and modern fluids are more refined and better at protecting. You shouldn't have to replace a gear oil and a differential, either front and rear, uh, either front or rear, within that short amount of time. Three years, 36,000 miles, we've got fully synthetic gear oils now that have all these properties. They should be able to protect for longer amounts of time. Well, to a degree, yes, but at the end of the day, Every single fluid in your vehicle, no matter what it is, no matter how well it's engineered, no matter what chemistry it has, whether it's synthetic or if it's conventional, etc., heat, time, and mileage will destroy it. It will break down those uh, protective additives in it. It will break down the viscosity of it. It will accumulate trash. It will accumulate debris, and it will not do its job. That car now is going to need an $8,500 CVT assembly because of the way that the Subaru transmission is made and the way the front differential is pretty much part of the transmission, even though it's a separate entity. Uh, most people aren't rebuilding the differentials on these, so it's more than likely going to cost them $8,500 just in parts, not labor, for this when they could have done the preventive maintenance and replaced that front differential gear oil and the rear differential gear oil as they should have on maintenance schedule and not had to incur this massive, massive expense. I mean, gear oil for the front differential is like one and a half quart, something like that. Uh, and, you know, it's 10 bucks, if that a quart. 
to think that that little bit of service, that little bit of maintenance was neglected, and that resulted in an $8,500 reman CVT or less if they put a used in. I mean, there's several different ways you can go about this repair, but at the end of the day, it's a massive repair and a massive, uh, you know, piece of the car's driveline that has failed. And a lot of people say again, well, why would it fail? How would it fail? Why is it on the customer? Why is it on the person that owns the vehicle that had this failure? Uh, again, it comes down to the lack of maintenance. As that gear oil circulates through there and it lubricates the ring and pinion and the bearings and everything in that front differential, it gets really hot. It goes through lots and lots of heat cycles as that heat goes into and out of that fluid. It starts breaking the fluid down. It makes it less viscous. It's not going to protect as well. And again, as it is doing its lubricating job, that is metal to metal wear either way, whether it's lubricated or not. And small pieces of particulate, small pieces of metal will come off and suspend in that fluid. And as that fluid grabs all of that up, it becomes abrasive and it starts tearing up the bearings. It starts eating into the ring and pinion, starts eating those gear teeth down, and eventually it's going to fail. So again, it's hard to think about a 100,000 mile uh, vehicle having this kind of a failure and this kind of repair bill but at the end of the day, it was so easy and so cheap to prevent that. And so many people just think that modern vehicles don't need the maintenance that they used to. They think that, hey, I can just change my oil every once in a while and continue to put gas in it. And, you know, I'm good to go. And I think a lot of that has come down to the fact that most people are not buying cars nowadays. There's a lot of people leasing cars. They'll lease a car for a couple of years, drive it in the ground and trade it in. And then it's whoever picks it up's problem after that. And again, during that lease period, they probably weren't doing that preventative maintenance. They were just, you know, changing the oil every once in a while and driving it and putting gas in it. And now it's going to be someone else's problem and the used car market suffering as well as the new car. And a lot of these failures are coming down just due to neglect. I've seen many, many newer Subarus have engines die at 30,000 miles or less mainly because they had never had an oil change. They still had the factory oil filter that left with the car from the showroom floor, and the engine was completely gummed up and seized up or just shot. I mean, the bearings were wiped out. Everything was just destroyed. And again, it's that lack of maintenance. I will never in my life understand why people will forego an oil change, a coolant service, brake fluid service, transmission fluid service, gear oil service, etc. That's, you know, a couple hundred dollars maximum if you're paying someone to do it, even less if you're doing it DIY, which is so easy to DIY, most of this on a Subaru. To have a full engine failure, full transmission failure, or something else that's a major ticket item, I just can't wrap my head around it. And I think it's come down again to more people leasing vehicles and thinking that they don't have to do the maintenance while they're leasing it and they're just going to turn it back in and oh it'll be the next guy's problem or just the fact that people think that modern cars are so advanced and are designed so much better than they were you know 10 20 30 years ago that maintenance is kind of a afterthought that it doesn't need to be uh, a top priority and that's just not true anything mechanical anything with a fluid is going to go through those heat cycles it's going to go through that fluid degrading and it needs to be replenished and refreshed shifting gears out of Subarus a lot of people now think that you know the golden ticket is to go buy a hybrid or an EV and then hey I don't have to do oil changes anymore I don't have to worry about coolant any of these service because I have an electric vehicle now and again, surprise, surprise, that is far from the truth as well because EVs need just as much maintenance and servicing as a traditional ICE vehicle. Many might not know this, but most electric vehicles do have coolant. Sometimes they have two cooling systems, one to cool the battery and one to cool the motors and the differentials depending on how they're made. So you've got double cooling systems to worry about replacing that coolant. And maintaining that coolant is especially important in those EVs when it's going through a high voltage battery. You don't want that coolant to corrode out the pipes that's going through in that battery and leak coolant into that high voltage battery. So maintenance is going to become even more important in the future with hybrids and electric vehicles than it is now with standard ICE vehicles. So a lot of people just cannot fathom that 
you know, there is maintenance still required, or it's even more important now than it was in the past. And again, technological advances are one thing, but mechanical things will always be mechanical things, and mechanical things always require lubrication and cooling. Uh, a lot of people don't realize on Teslas, you still have oil changes to do. There's oil changes, oil filters on those drive motors and the gears in the drive motors. There is the coolant services. Uh, funny enough, some of the battery packs and motor drives use coolant or refrigerant from the air conditioning system. So back in the day, you know, if you had an issue and your AC went out and, you know, it was the end of summer, you could, you know, oh, well, we're not going to replace that compressor. We're not going to worry about going through and doing the air conditioning. I will worry about that come spring, come summer when I'm hot and sweating again. You know, I can get through the winter without the AC system. Well, a lot of these vehicles are now using their refrigerant to cool the battery packs and cool the motors. So you have to, at that point in time, fix that air conditioning system because you physically cannot continue to drive the vehicle without repairing it. You know, on an ICE vehicle, it was an afterthought whatever. We could take the belt off if we needed to, don't run the compressor, what have you, turn the system off, unplug the compressor, I'll just sweat, you know, I can be hot. But that's no longer the case due to the way the engineering is in these vehicles and how they're using the systems differently now than they did in the past. So again, maintenance is key, maintenance will always be key, and a lot of vehicles uh, lack of reliability comes down again to owners, bad owners, lack of maintenance, and lack of taking care of a vehicle the way it should be. And it's just sad to see that so many people have come to this uh, new conclusion, new line of thinking that they don't need to maintain their vehicle again just to be hit with financial strain and stress when a major failure occurs that could have easily been prevented. So whether it's a seized engine due to lack of oil changes or a destroyed driveline because of fluid replacement neglect, are you guys seeing a shift as far as the masses are concerned about reliability in vehicles, technological advances, and not maintaining things? Again, it's always cheaper to maintain a vehicle than to repair a vehicle, and I for one just can't understand why so many people are going this route with the expense of vehicles and expense of the cost of living nowadays and, you know, just trashing their cars because they think they can get away with not maintaining them and not doing recommended services. What are your thoughts and feelings? Let me know down in the comment section below. Are you seeing this yourself with your friends and neighbors? Are you seeing more of a shift towards people wrecking their own cars and their own car's reliability due to their own neglect? Or do you really think that there's been a lack of reliability, a lack of quality in the manufacturers and the product they're delivering for us? Let me know your thoughts below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more Subaru content in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one.